So the Needs Audio sent me their new plugin, Poltergate. And as the name suggests, it's a noise gate. Um, but more specifically tailored towards drums. Now, they did send me the plugin to check out and ask if I maybe want to do a video, but I'm not getting paid. All these thoughts are still mine. I don't know if that constitutes a sponsorship, but well, just disclaimer, it is what it is. Now, Poltergate, let's look at the website first, shall we? Because I also haven't checked it out yet. I just installed it, activated it, and now I want to experience the learning process. So, Poltergate, sound shaping from beyond. Poltergate fuses the powers of transient design, gating, and de-bleeding into one. Okay, already there, I kind of like this. So it's kind of an all-in-one solution, not just a gate, but also, you yeah, know, transient design and de-bleeding. It's right there. I like it when <laughs> sentences are short, to the point, very precise, and give you all the information you need. Shape live drums, samples, or any source you like in a swift, creative, and intuitive way. Achieve better noise reduction, instrument separation, and deep leading in a plugin optimized for power, fast results, and creativity. Power to me is a buzzword. Fast results is good because fast workflow is important. And creativity is, of course, important because when you have a sound in mind, you want to get that as fast as possible while it's fresh in your mind and you have the drive to get there. Creative looping. Use the Poltergate creatively thanks to its extended feature set and go a bit crazy if you want to. For example, use the EQ graph and spike to target whatever instrument you would like to use in a sampled loop. Oh. Then set the release to sync the tempo and even automate it to create rhythmic effects using the curve feature to tweak the feel of it. Ah, interesting. Unique spike feature to detect transient easily. Transients control to me. Uh, bleed shall not pass. Oh, we created our own deep bleeding algorithm to achieve the precision we wanted. With just three intuitive knobs, you can keep the bleed out while preserving both the punch and the resonance of the drum. It's triggered by the same threshold as the gate, so you can save time by adjusting both the gate and the deep bleeder at once rather than separately. Takes care of that cymbal spill and low end rumble on toms like nothing else interesting and it costs right now 60 bucks and usually it would be 100 so let's see if that price is worth it now here i got a little bit of a project a new song that's gonna be off the next on the next album um if you want to find out more about that then join my discord link is in the description let's check out a small section Okay, now let me go into the drums here and first of all, go to the mixer, kick drum, take out the transient designer and snare transient designer. Um, yeah, just that. And then on the toms, we could also take out the gates and then check out things as we go. Um, now, kick, so where do I have the plugin actually? The knees, poltergate. Let's put that first in the chain. Okay, okay, so here we got our threshold. Yeah, it's also down here. I actually need to use my headphones. Yep, I also recommend you use headphones to hear it more clearly. You notice the kick drum without uh, the gate, it has this little bit of this 
uh, tail that kind of sounds like like a little bit of reverb. And without setting anything up, that's immediately taken out. Very interesting. So we got sidechain, we got curve. Not entirely sure what it does. I don't hear much of a difference. Uh, you know what? You know what? Um, let's turn this on again. Uh, turn this off. And let's go onto the drum bus actually. Put it on here. Uh -huh. this up here I would like to have a little bit of a tooltip show me what these buttons do this seems to be a bypass button a headphone symbol for bypass I don't remember ever seeing something like that but okay then we have this arrows ah ah okay I, I understand so the arrows kind of make the uh, gate work in reverse quite literally with the arrows showing, hey, it's going in reverse now. So everything that it's supposed to let through is now being muted, and everything that's supposed to be muted is now being let through. Interesting. That's actually that's actually kind of neat. That is actually kind of kind of very neat. Gotta keep that in mind. So, let's see what we have here. Dynamics. Okay, wow. That's starting to hurt my ears, kind of. Ah, okay. Yeah, this um, um, separated threshold and return uh, is pretty, pretty interesting. Well, I mean, interesting. A lot of gates actually do that these days, and it's really cool. So, threshold success from this point on, you're going to open up, and return means, well, you're not gonna close at the threshold, but actually a little bit lower. So, in that way, um, yeah, you can really make these spikes only open up the gate, but then the gate leaves a little bit of resonance of body through before. It shuts down. That's that's cool. Then spike. I I think that's just for detection because I don't hear a difference. So yeah, I don't think I have any live drums at my disposal right now. Uh, so let's go back in here into some individual tracks. Kick drum. Let's turn off the transient designer in my drums. Um, floor. Ah. So floor just means how 
low is the gate supposed to push down anything that is gating? Uh, attack. Yeah, you see when when you put settings like these too fast, it it sounds broken. Ah, cool. So you can you can tie the release time to the uh, tempo of the song. That's neat. Um, I don't see many gates doing that. So for drums, I definitely kind of like settings like these. One millisecond attack time, so it opens up really fast and you don't lose that, that transient. Then hold it for about 50 milliseconds so you get that full punch and that full body. And then release usually a little bit longer, about 100 milliseconds, depending on what we're dealing with, up to 400 milliseconds. So we have a more natural taper. Oh, I'm not 100% sure about the ahead button. Ah, we can resize. Good. Good. I suppose it's some kind of look ahead. Then again, curve. I, I, I'm sure this means how exactly the gate tapers off the volume, either going like linear or like real fast and then slow or slow and then fast and... Purely gating has already eliminated a lot of the unwanted content from the signal. However, the kick still has a tail of symbols that makes further processing difficult. To get rid of this, we can use the low pass filter section of the built-in deep leader. Now let's listen to a quick before and after. Without the Porter gate. With the Porter gate. Well, I'm impressed. It's kind of exactly what I've always been lacking with my live drums, but as I said, I, I don't really have live drums right now. The deep leader is designed to prevent the bleeding of undesired frequencies into the signal. With the high pass filter section, unwanted low frequency content can be removed from the signal without destroying the transient. In this example, we are removing some of the low rumble and sustain from the floor tom. Listen to how the sustain of the tom becomes shorter and the hum becomes less. To listen to the sidechain signal, we press the headphone icon in the top right hand corner. Oh, okay. Oh, duh. <laughs> no wonder I thought this was a bypass because I, I, I wasn't actually using this sidechaining. Okay, that makes sense, of course. Yeah, but you know what I want to do right now? Um, let's go to Deep Bleed. Let's use this. Yeah, well, wait, hang on. Um. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> So right now, the gate itself is not actually doing anything. See, I have the floor at 0 dB, so it's not actually pushing anything down. But now using the low pass on the D plate means it's kind of... Um, well, the gate is working really heavily on higher frequencies. So you see how, how that whooshy tail is gone now? Now let's see if we can get a little bit of that resonance that's keeping on swinging down there also under control.
Now I probably wouldn't use that for that, so rather again just a normal gate. That's that's awesome. Hang on, but now I also want to accentuate here some transients. Not too much because this really quickly gets very spiky and punchy. That's awesome. Oh, that can make your jump sound really aggressive really quickly. I like that. I like that. Oh my goodness. This is starting to look really cool. I also kind of know this with plugins these days to really kind of put something new to the market. Uh, things have to get a little bit more complex. I mean, there are a million EQs out there, there are a million compressors, there are a million noise gates. Well, someone has to kind of progress stuff. And for that, things get more complex. And because of that, we need a little bit more um, kind of manuals or guiding videos like Denise actually do to really understand the plugins and to uh, learn a proper workflow for it or the workflow that they intended. So I'm actually not really annoyed by not understanding a plugin right away. It's kind of just the nature of how technology progresses. Uh, so let's now check out snare drum. Now you hear the curve having a little bit of an effect. When it's at 100%, it has more of a... I suppose it's linear, and when you put it to 0%, it's tapping off faster and then slower. So when you put in a slow release, then you can still get more control without having uh, the sound too chopped off. Man, the low pass on the deep lead is so powerful. It really cleans up everything so nicely. Especially with this snare I'm using here. Um, hang on, what, what I actually did in this mix is I, I used this uh, multiband compressor, but as an expander instead of ex an ex uh, compressor. Uh, to, to get that, well, rattly actual snare sound in the top range more in the control because it was just kind of fizzling on too much for me. So let's take that out. You notice? So I, I wanted to have a very bright and fast attack, but without it sounding harsh. And I had to do this to get that under control, but now with this, it might actually be easier. Huh? Almost, almost. Almost, not quite what what I had in mind.
Yeah, here you can also kind of tell what, what it's doing. It's literally a low pass filter that's going really fast back and forth. Yeah, but for this snare sound, what I intended, this actually doesn't quite do what I had in mind because I, I kind of need that whole frequency range to actually act as one. And the low pass filter just going back and forth isn't quite doing what I had in mind. Yes, this is where it can come very in handy, this plugin, just making a snare sound fatter. Because it's easy to kind of accentuate the, the uh, transient, the attack, and then it can get very spiky really quick, but uh, where's the body in the end? Um, and this can kind of mitigate that. So, here, this will come very in handy as well. Let's turn off all of these gates. And that put Polter gate on here again. Hang on. Not on the hi-hat, don't need that. Okay, let's go to Tom 4. That one has a lot of boom boom and ring going on. No, it's how it's just sustaining endlessly. We can't have that in here. Now here you notice the peak to sustain ratio is not that great for getting control over this. So let's raise that spike. Bam, then our uh, detection can be much better. Uh, attack against just one millisecond, hold, put it against 50 milliseconds, and then release. Let's put it nice and slow, about 400 milliseconds, so our tom doesn't get just chopped off, but kind of tapers a little bit more naturally. A little bit of pop. I don't know if it's because of my buffer or the fast attack. Okay. Now instead, uh, we could also try just using the deep leader with a high pass filter. See, then you really just kind of take care of that resonance and that very lower range, but then all that mid range where you have this little bit of natural room and other frequencies still going on on the tom, those still have space to, to have their sustain. And if you want to have it very controlled, you can do something like this. But now you notice you have this pew, pew, pew going on. It's a little bit of a, of a laser gun sound because of that low pass filter just moving real quick. Okay, maybe something like that. Okay, and there we go. Now, let's compare now. The low end is definitely much more under control with the polter gate instead of a normal gate. The high end I would have to tweak a little bit more and maybe I don't even need to filter it out.
Okay, there we have that. This is definitely, definitely very, very neat. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I like it. So with the whole addition with the sidechain EQ and also your spike here, you can really dial in the detection for, for the noise gate. That's something that not every gate has. That's very, very helpful. Then with dynamics, you can add that punch, which means accentuate that transient. And raising the fatness means you kind of raise that little bit of the sustain that the noise gate still kind of keeps in there. That really helps to very quickly just get that kind of feel you want from the drums. And then with the attack and duration, you can still fine tweak the fatness. And deep lead is a very great tool to yeah, actually deep lead stuff. You know, get, getting rid of like continuous sustaining low end hum or upper frequencies, for example, from cymbals bleeding into snare or cake or toms and whatnot. You can filter that out very easily with that. This is a powerful noise gate, if you ask me. Um, and if you mix drums regularly, or let's say if you mix live drums regularly and constantly have these little bit of problems with your gating and bleeding in, the, in these individual tracks, then this is definitely worth it. Um, at the very least, try it out, see what it does for you. It's got my thumbs up. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, comment below, whatever you want to do. You know how YouTube works. And I shall see you next time.